And there we are, Jane. Let me remove that. Hey, folks. Happy St. Patty's Day. Uh, Lester and Jamie here, and we are blessed to have you joining us on this wonderful Sunday afternoon. Yeah, this is about as much green as I could find in my closet. I'm sad because look, it's all. This is my old. It used to say Cog, Cog Squad. Squad. This is my Cog Hill shirt. And this is, I don't think the Irish really care if we're not like leprechaun green. I care. I'm greenish. I am just greenish. And uh, it ain't easy being green, Lester. It ain't easy being green. I'll tell you what is green. That's that darn snake inside our house, and we don't know where it's at. So what we've done, our, we leave our door open, and we've taken our AC and turned it down as cold as we can get it. The AC goes down to about 63 degrees. It's as cold as our house will get with the door opened. It might would get cooler if we close the door, but that defeats the entire purpose. We leave the door open so the snake will say, it's too cold, and I'm going back out in the sun. And uh, it has been in the 70s around here during the day. So I'm hoping that snake will at some point realize that going to that house was not the best of ideas. It may have seemed fun, but it's just too darn cold in there. In the meantime, we refuse to sleep here. We have been working by day, tiptoeing around the house, watching our every step. Uh, and then uh, by night we uh, load up. Tiptoeing isn't actually an understatement. Uh, I play the floor is lava. I like go from place to place to place. And not touching the floor. Can so I like make jump. a confession that's probably a little TMI for everyone? I didn't even pee in the house today. I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to sit down on the toilet because what if? What if they're like up under the ring? Or like what if it was going to like jump up and get me? So where did you pee? I'm just going to go with not in the house. Did you at least wipe with a with a handy wipe or a wet wipe? Yeah. Yeah, we don't use dry toilet paper around here. We use wet wipes. Is that too much information too? We like wet wipes. We discovered wet wipes. Why are we talking about wet wipes? I don't know where, we why, what made you go down this path. Well, but. because I don't picture you taking the wet wipes with you to go wherever you went to pee at. And now I uh, watch my step everywhere I go to pee, which is just wonderful, Jamie. Whatever, Mr. Pee off the porch at every place. We, it's a man thing, and no one's going to get it. No one here is going to get it except for any men that may be following along. But what I will say is, uh, just to finish up the whole wet wipe thing, we learned about wet wipes during the great toilet paper debacle of 2020 when we could not find toilet paper, but what Jamie found a ton of – uh, was wet wipes. Well, hold on. That's because I, I don't. Have... I don't mean. I don't mean like Lysol wipes. We're not no. using Lysol. They're actually made for I hygienic used purposes. Baby wipes since Xander was born for like everything in life. Like clean the car while you're driving. Take off your makeup at night. Sanitary things. Wiping off the counters. Whatever. I am. I am a firm believer in the wet wipe. Everyone's running around crazy because they could not find toilet paper. We're like, we have we have tons of wet wipes, and these work even better than toilet paper. But hey, to each his own. Just don't flush them. You can't flush them. Oh, no, actually, no, 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 no. Some of those that you brought over here said they're. It doesn't bio matter what they said. You never flush them. Well, Wait, do you flush them? Okay, well, hold on. So when you say them, you're talking about plural. It only takes one because they're heavy duty wet wipes. You do know that. Toilet paper in little sheets, they call them, take multiple. You need a lot of sheets. But a wet wipe, you only need one. Why are you making that face? What's wrong with you? If you've never used a wet wipe, you don't know what you're missing out on. It's a very pleasant experience, and it will leave you 10 times. At least it feels 10 times. You, you can't know, flush even the flushable one. You, if They say flushable. They lie. We've never had an issue. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I don't know. I don't think people want to jump onto a live and see what Lester and Jamie are up to just to find out that we don't use toilet paper. We use wet wipes. We do use toilet paper. We have toilet paper. We are not without. Anyway, now that we've shared that secret. I'm done. With the world. I'm done. That's, okay. I we can move on. Thing. No, I revealed one thing. I'm done. People do know too much about us. You know that, right? They know they know too much about us. It's our own fault because we just can't shut up. We can't stop talking. We 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 say too much. I made a reel yesterday that I my deodorant smells different on me now, and I 
I don't know if they changed the chemicals in the deodorant or if my, my body changing, but I'm like, that, aren't you? I've been using the same one for like 10 years, not the exact same stick, but the exact same brain for 10 years. And the lady goes, is that the one you rub between your thighs too? And I was like, yeah, they know me. They know way too much about me. <laughs> I actually, I, I like it. I like I like the fact that people know a lot about us. Uh, we've, we've always been, we've tried to be pretty transparent with all the animal, the ongoings of the sanctuary and the properties. We've tried to be very transparent with almost everything in life. We sometimes have probably told too much. Uh, but I, at the same time, it, I think it, it reveals that we are a trusting community where we love each other because you don't tell complete strangers, y'all, some things that we've, revealed back and forth to you all and in all honesty many of you i see names here of people who email me and we communicate on a regular basis and we all know a lot about each other y'all so i i have no regrets as far as any of that kind of stuff goes i don't i did not want to need to know that you peed outside today though because now my question goes to how do you feel like you're safe for peeing outside in the grass where there's i can give it the old one two look over and go fast enough there's no like under place. No, like but we have right now we're being attacked from above. We're being attacked from above from some kind of flying. True. There's a flying worm. Listen, I, I, I don't want to start off on a negative thing, but once again, it's becoming more and more obvious that we live on a haunted piece of property. <laughs> and if anything can go weird and wrong, it's going to. And we're just this <laughs> fools. We're going to sit here and just walk around oblivious to what's going on around us but now we've been invaded by flying worms there's some kind of an inchworm that are they're flying towards us they're not just flying around us they're flying towards us and landing on us and yeah. they're they're worm all worm magnets they're all over the place <laughs> and i don't know what it is inchworms are so sweet are those inchworms Listen, I don't know what they are, but all worms all all things like that little caterpillar hey, things will eat things that grow there is that is a fact so i'm sorry for the worm lovers i don't love worms i never knew i was scared of worms until i found <laughs> one on my neck and then i realized that i'm terrified of worms worms i always thought were kind of cute as they're doing their thing across you know wherever you find worms but uh, this morning i found two on my hat and once i got those removed and i got back to making my video then i looked up and there's one crawling across my neck and so at that point you don't know where those worms are at you don't know what they're all in i know ears, is they move nose. the same stupid way that snakes move and i can't i just can't there's already a snake in the house there's flying worms there's ants that are literally burrowing miles below us and yeah. destroying all the things right here and i have just like i've met my quota with things with random rare things and we've been told to get some gasoline and just burn them out guys. And I told Jimmy, what if I put the gasoline and light it and all of a sudden poop and the entire ground caves in the, underneath us. And so you're going to be seeing me down in there with all them ants like, hell, I told them I would throw them a pole. Like I would, I would get no, out the you said, pole. no, what your exact words were, let's make great video. That was her exact words. That would make great video of seeing me sucked into a giant ant hole. They'd probably end up using me as along with their food to, <laughs> To ferment, I, pictures I would be fermenting in there, all gooed so up. So many the wall. ants, so many ants carrying Lester and you on your back, going hell. <laughs> yeah, because down below are the bigger ants. All we see are the little small ones, but down below are the really big ones who can't get out. And all they do is carry the food back and forth to the queen. You know and that, that they're going to serve me up nice. That somebody knows, like if I die, if I die dumb doing something stupid. Yeah, make if, a video. if I if I die young doing something stupid. Make a video Make and a, YouTube it. The world and YouTube it. Yeah, I know yeah. the song. So that's all I thought about in that moment. I was like, that would actually make a great video. If if it created a sinkhole like that, like that would be wild. But you would video it because I know you would never put the camera down. You're the only man I know that would wrestle an ostrich and lose your pants and video it. So if you can make it through that, you can make it through ants. I was actually just trying to make sure that I let the world know how I die. So there would be no there would there would be no uh, no, no one questions. would have to question like what happened to Lester. You would see it firsthand. What happened to Lester? How is this any different? Well, I mean, I mean, <laughs> heck, we'll do it if I have to do it. But oh, you can open the doors and set off a couple of bug bombs, and it might send the snake out. And it might, but um, 
The thing is, I think that just getting that the house nice and cool. Somebody said that they'll hibernate and not move if their bodies. No, hibernate. they don't tell me that. We've been running the air on full blast the entire day. <sighs> okay, well that ain't gonna work then. Yeah, they just go into hibernation mode and not crawl out. Lord, uh, all I know is here's here's another idea. Here's another idea. This is what happened one time naturally. So you guys may not know this about me, but there was a time in my teaching career when I actually did have a snake, a, a small snake. Uh, and I've talked about it before. And that snake happened to go missing. Not from my classroom. That's a different story. Uh, from my vehicle. As I brought the snake home, he somehow found his way out of the plastic, you no, know, the paper bag. He pushed right through the paper bag and he went missing. Uh, we couldn't find him. Uh, so I left my truck doors open. And in about a week, my sister Kim called uh, because she had all of her nativity scenes set up down by her <sighs> by her house. And my snake had made his way all the way down to her nativity scene where she had a lamp. And that lamp was warmer than the, the temperature outside. So that snake curled up into her nativity scene uh, and was staying nice and warm. She found him and called me. I come and got him. So in saying so, maybe we could keep the house cold, but put us a heat lamp somewhere. And he might go to the heat lamp. We have to think smarter than the snake. You gotta so, start to think like a snake channel. Think like a snake. If we could, if this could work, then we <clears> might <throat> be able to, to capture all kinds of reptiles that way. Listen, the fact that you had a snake and are terrified of them makes no sense to me. No, I did it for cool points. I did not do it because I liked them. I did it because I wanted to be cool with my students. It I'm was itching a, and like crawl, like my skin is crawling thinking about it. And if I would have met you when you had a snake, this would this would not be a thing. I'm sorry. That's a deal breaker for me. Well, I'm not saying I enjoyed the snake and the days that I had to bring him home over the long holidays was always terrifying of what if he got out in the house? Well, that has finally happened. We finally have a snake free in our home. But listen, let's get down to the root of the problem. It's not the snake. It's how the snake got there. We should find the root cause. Uh, you should always explore the root cause to eliminate problems like this in the future. And the root cause is that someone continually leaves the door open and i don't understand why there's fine the weather's nice and it's nice and cool and we're enjoying these days the sun's out and so you think that's a great day to leave the door wide open well is it because now we've seen a snake crawl from jamie's botanical garden across the short stretch there of the porch and go right into the house and I now, leave it open for five minutes while I'm hauling stuff in and out. And now all of a sudden I'm the I'm the door lever opener. -er. I'm not trying to call you out on anything. I'm just saying oh, okay. we need to make sure our door is closed. Well, good thing, because like I would have to call you out time. on some things. Um, or we need a good screen door. So one door can be open and the other one will still be screened. But uh, our problem with the screen door is that our dogs will go right through it. There ain't no way you're going to keep Chrissy out of a screen door. If she wants in, she's going to go in right through the screen. Screen doors are made for people who have sweet little animals. Our cats would climb on the screen. Our dogs would scratch on it, and it wouldn't last us a week, I don't think. Yeah. Mm, we had a snake in our bat bedroom. My runt men pen took care of it. What's that? A dog. A dog? A runt min pin. A mini pin, Mitch Pincher. I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Like it was a, like a mini Heidi. Oh, okay. Right? I think so. I think that's what they look like. Is like a well, mini Well, Ann, can you bring your mini right? Ren pin over here? Min pin, what'd you say? Yeah. Your mini pincher over here. Um, yeah, we thought our cats would take care of it, but our barn cats are terrified of the house now. Who would have known? You think that the barn cats would enjoy the opportunity to spend some time inside the house? We sit them in the house and they each what they panicked. They panicked. They begin to jump on things and, and scream and Way holler. Way too much confinement for them. Climbing to the good. windows and they're all at the windows, like scratching, trying to get out through the glass. And so then she says, catch them. They wouldn't let me catch them because I already called them once to bring them in. So we've had a really rough go these last couple of days. We're not complaining. It's our own fault. We Somebody live and we says, learn. how are we going to know if it got out? Well, I don't know if we'll ever know. It could be out. Uh, Jamie has a really great nose, and so I hope that if it ends up dying in the house, she'll be able to smell it, and we can pinpoint it and find it. 
Um, we I just... would have hoped that the dogs would have found it because yeah. they find it. They find snakes out here in the in the botanical garden in the landscaping. Our dogs find everything, and they they go nuts over it, and will point it out to us. And then Lester has to kill it. Now that was last year. Don't say the word K I. Say... Just oh. could we say send that snake to the sweet by and by? Oh, and then I'll be able to sing it along with a lot of other people who love when Lester sings gospel hymns. In the sweet by and by, come on, join me. We will meet on that beautiful shore. <laughs> anyway, unlive it, somebody said. That's not too bad of a word. But of the sweet by and by. <laughs> I like so that. I have pulled out the fridge. It's not there. We flipped over couches. It's not so there. So you say you pulled out the fridge, but I tried to remind Jamie that I've not looked under the fridge. Nope. But I think that when you go under, you can go up a little ways. So it could Which go. Which is why I haven't opened the fridge. No, he can't go inside the fridge, but he can go up and under. There's some kind of a, a tank in there. And he could be quartered on that tank that's nice and warm. Um, I don't know where the snake's at but here's the thing i know i'm pretty sure it's not a poisonous snake unless it's some kind of like some snake from some other where it's a it's a garden snake i'm pretty sure green with a black stripe so i know i that... saw it pretty i saw it from here to the door that's how far away it was it wasn't too long it's not big enough to swallow us um but it's just it's a snake y'all and no matter what kind of snake, it's still scary to know there's a snake climbing around somewhere in your home. So I know that the snake repellent stuff that you buy has cinnamon in it. Did you know that? No, I've never heard of it. Yeah. That I've stuff heard of mothballs. I know you can put mothballs to repel snakes. I didn't know that. Yeah, mothballs. So I knew that the cinnamon thing was, so I put, <laughs> I sprinkled cinnamon in places oh. today. And then I also uh set out little bowls of those things by the doorway of the bedroom of that because i had some snake repellent still from from the sanctuary uh -huh. i don't know if it's any good but i'm trying to ward off all evil things out of our bedroom just in case well i would love to hear about if anyone has a serious suggestion not like you know you know serious suggestions oh my gosh you know who can smell snakes do you remember who has this, who has a snake nose Brooke yeah. at Cog Hill. We're just going to have to invite him over. But Brooke can only smell look. those kind of snakes. But look, then he can come stay in their old RV. They have their old RVs right here. Yeah. The Brooke's old RV. This feels like an excellent plan. So we're going to need you guys to get on the bandwagon and help us convince Brooke to come down and smell, smell, and smell out our snake. <laughs> but I do believe that Brooke can smell certain kinds of snake. There are milk snakes and wait, other... Wait, wait. She can smell chicken. certain... She can define... Well, she can't like smell say, oh, there's a garden snake. Oh, there's a chicken snake. Chicken snakes do have a horrible smell. Really? It, a chicken snakes smell horrible. And everyone who's been around chicken snakes know that they have a really unique and a, it's like they're dead already, yet they're alive. They have a really bad, funky, it's a funky smell. Uh, you ever gone inside like a locker room after kids have had a game, a sports game, and all their socks are piled up and never smelled something like that Hold on. i had a boy who played sports and left his sports bag in the hot car in the some baseball baseball blah, blah, blah. yeah no it that could be the same thing but there's like a musky smell of um that these uh, chicken snakes can excrete and so brooke says she has the power to smell them and so i don't know if she can smell a garden snake i don't even know if i don't know y'all i don't know what to do well here's but what listen. i do know we ain't sleeping here. No, I don't know how long that snake can go without starving to death, but uh, we need to probably, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I, I honestly, I don't know what to do, but I was, I don't want to be mad about it because there's nothing to be mad about. It's not anyone's fault. No one planned it to happen that way. It's just happened. But uh, let's move on. Let's get away from the snake topic because now we're all going to have the heebie jeebies and we don't mean to scare you all. But uh, what I will say is don't leave your doors open especially if you have a botanical garden where, where you water daily, where you know you have green frogs come up, tree frogs come up because they love that life. And then you have a door, an open door, say, hey, come on in, hang out with us until you're hungry again. And that's kind of what we've done. So 
we're not uh we've looked for the snake we've looked extensively for the snake uh sofas cushions uh all of the the bed mattress all of those kind of things pillows obviously we've washed a lot of things and but listen y'all it doesn't matter how small your home is our, our apartment is tiny it's a one bedroom a small office ki kitchen and living room and a washer a, wash, a second bathroom a mud room you call it mm -hmm. and so it's not a we don't have a lot of space there's not lots of hiding places but i don't know how big of a space it would take for this little guy or girl to hide so oh marcia your cats will catch them please you don't even know. I brought in four cats yesterday along with our re three regular cats and uh, they wanted nothing to do with anything. They wanted out of that house so bad. They terrified each other. We had a we had a cat fight. We had our cats on one side, the outside cats on the other side. They're all hissing and walking with their, with, with their backs are all up in the air. Our dogs came in to kind of referee everything. Listen, it's it's not been pretty. It's not been pretty around here. But we have to move off the snake topic. We've been talking snakes for 21 minutes, Jamie. And there's other things to talk about, like baby goats. What is that? The dogs are just playing right now. Now we're spooked about everything. Doesn't matter. I'm just paying attention. Sorry. You hear a noise. You hear you 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 hear anything out of the ordinary, and all of a sudden you're all like on high alert. But we did have baby goats born, and we're both so embarrassed because we did not even know the mom was pregnant. Now, in our defense, Lester always has an excuse. Everyone knows that. I always have an excuse, <laughs> as do most men. We always have an excuse. We can never take blame for anything. It's someone else's fault. But in this situation, my excuse in this one over here is, yeah, the goat's been here for an entire month. Okay, that's great. But the goat's not friendly, and the goat's not one of our original goats. This is the goat that came from my dad, from Paw Paw. And the goat went to live with Ellie for a couple of months, where the goat bore Walter Mellon. Right? That's the that's the goat's baby, Walter, Walter Mellon. And uh cute goat, cute, cute Walter Mellon's adorable. Uh, Ellie had Walter Mellon fixed and all of that. So everything's good there. But uh, whenever they lost all of their grass and then they had the horrible issue with the coccidia, the parasite there in the soil, Ellie sent a lot of his goats over here to rest, recruit, gain some weight from our from our blessings here on the hill and along the river. Uh, Carrie was one of those goats. We didn't spend much time with them because, like I said, they're not gentle goats the way ours are. You know, our goats, you walk out and they all come up. They all take their turns getting some loving. But uh, these goats are not like that. They're just kind of like she goats. she wasn't gigantic. Like, like, I went back to some of my videos because we dewormed the goats a few weeks ago. And I had I actually held her between my legs while I dewormed her. and she, Didn't notice anything. No. So, like, she hit it. But she's a bigger goat so i'm used to being able to see on our minis you can tell when they're pregnant like you can tell when they're gigantic these goats just looked a little heavier like yeah i thought they were bigger a yes. bigger breed of goat yes and so how shocked was i that uh, yesterday afternoon i'm leaving out making a video of the beautiful pastures and stuff and uh i happened to see this brown goat off by herself with these three babies and I'm like, whose goat is that? Because I thought one of the neighbor's goats have walked over to have her babies here. I'm like, how am I going to explain this? And I start looking. I'm like, whose goat is that? Because those babies look so much like, what's that little is buck's this, name over there? Uh, Gus Gus. Gus Gus. I'm like, That's, who's, whose goats is that? So I get out of the truck where I can see better. I'm looking around and I'm like, Wait. That's that brown goat from Ellie's house. I saw her collar. And sure enough, when we walked over, it was Carrie. And she had three babies. And I felt like the worst goat owner, the worst far farmer of all time. Because I had no idea she was even pregnant. I had been, I, we, we did no bag reports. We did none of the fun stuff that we always do. None and of that here's stuff. another weird thing. So people are like, you didn't notice her bag? Like, let me tell you a no. secret about the bags, okay? So even Oh, goats hold on. 
This is a secret about the bags. Yeah. Let's hear it. Even goats that are not pregnant, if they have ever been pregnant before, will, in our herd, develop a bag even when they aren't pregnant if someone else is pregnant. So, like, yeah. their cycles sync up, and all of a sudden, they have milk, and they're not pregnant. And the Golden Girls have tricked us several times with several that. Several times. And um, so, I also, I guess I've become a little desensitized to seeing milk in a bag because of that. Mm. But but I'm telling you, I held her. This sounds terrible. I held her between my legs like two weeks ago when we dewormed when yeah. the coccidia thing was going on. Yeah, we did deworming and, and a pre-treatment here in a, a lice treatment. We sprayed here. for lice. We did all that to yes. all of the babies and had no idea. But what I'm saying is like <laughs> you couldn't tell. And even now today, I can't tell that she like I don't know where they came from inside of her does that make any sense to you hold on well everyone's saying she was so friendly at pawpaws well i don't know what happened between pawpaws and here but uh, she's not so friendly here maybe the transport of in the trailer maybe. i think since she had walter melon so i remember when walter melon because you remember she had two walter melon and uh another baby that didn't make it and i remember that after that moment she became very standoffish she would let us touch walter, walter melon yeah, which we, made him very friendly melon, but yeah. she very much became somewhat like shirley i would even say a little bit guarded a little bit reclusive and it you know her changing herds probably had something to do with that yeah um and then giving birth in a what what wasn't her home you know it wasn't her home it was her new home but it wasn't her home like i just like tried to think through all of Honeydew was Carrie's baby who didn't make it. There you go. Um, there, there were things in her dynamics that just changed her as a goat. She is less skittish than the bearded lady. Yeah. Yeah, the bearded lady is, she won't come anywhere near us. Now, like I said, I don't keep up. I, we don't generally visit other people's properties and get to know all of their animals. You know, we have our hands full with our own. And that goes for all of us. My dad didn't know our animals. We don't know his. We know of, you know, the same as we know of Daniel's animals. We know of Jake's and Bree's and Kim's. We know of all of them. We can identify whose goats are who when they get out because they get out all the time. But uh, we don't just uh, know the ins and outs. But I will say this. We've done nothing to make the goats skittish besides the Papa transporting. Papa said she was timid and was picked on by other goats, but she didn't want to go to Ellie's. So, so Papa said, my dad said she was timid and did not like to be around the other goats. So That's very much who she is. That's how she is here, too. Yeah. She's timid and doesn't want to be around the other goats. Yeah. Perfect. So she's not changed at all. So a lot of folks are saying that she was so sweet with Papa. Well, maybe she was sweet-ish. She's sweet-ish here. She's not like wild. We don't walk out and she hauls but no, you know, she to the back No, she just doesn't come up pasture. to you like Tilly does or, you know, that type of thing. So we have some very, very friendly goats. And I would put her, like, if 10 was very friendly, I would put her more down the 3-4 range is yeah, what I would if, say. If 10 was a Tilly. Yeah. Or, or, Ringo. or a Ringo who wants attention, who comes to yeah. you and wants to rub up against your leg like a cat or a dog might. I would say she's a three. She'll let you walk up. Now, if you're feeding them, if you're feeding the goats, then they're all going to come right around your legs. Yes. So but she's just, not just a random. So maybe though. saying wild, she's a wild goat. That's yeah. maybe not the best word choice, but she's not like one of our goats. Yeah. But um, I'll tell you what. So she has three babies and three has been kind of a lucky and a weird thing this year for us. Lots of male goats and then lots of babies born in threes, triplets. And then, uh, of course, every one of them have that same darn face that Gus Gus has. <laughs> I the wonder, genes are profound. I wonder how many moms have sons and daughters who look like your husband or your partner. And you're like, oh, no, no, no. That was not my hope. That was not my goal. Sometimes certain people have such strong genes. Um, my, my genes were a lot stronger. They show a lot more with L.E., than they do with Lex. Lex. Yeah, I don't think so. Lex? I think that L.E. and Lex do not look alike. They act alike. They laugh alike. They talk alike. They think alike. But I don't think they look alike. So I watched y'all lined up. In fact, I have a video of it from, from the rodeo this week while y'all three were lined up like this and profile wise oh y'all have the exact same like it was freaky to me how i was like 
it was clone and clone. Now, of course, Lex has different skin tone. His because, comes from his mama. He's much, you know, much more olive and darker in that name and, and darker hair, darker complexion. But the same ears, the same nose, the same lips, the same profile, the same feet and fingers and mannerisms. And then I also remember when Lex was little bitty. And he would sleep in bed with us. And I would roll over and you both are waking up and you both do this eye rub thing <laughs> with the same exact, like same exact freakish motion of yep, all. Yeah. So like, yeah, I probably see it more than you because Ellie does look like a mirrored image of you. But I look Lex at the, has... the skin complexion. Lex is darker. Yeah. Uh, Ellie's lighter. But then again, Lex's mom is quite a bit darker than yeah. Lex's mom. Uh, Ellie's mom is quite a bit lighter. Right. So I think that that's kind of where that comes from. Um, we, we have a lady. I've only seen it from one person who said it repeatedly that we are frozen. So I don't know that for a fact, but I just need to let you know that if you find that your Internet is frozen, I don't think it's on our end. Now, I don't know that for a fact. But uh, sometimes you can restart your computer or your device. You can just go back out of the live and then come back in. And sometimes that helps too. Yeah. A lot of people are saying now it's not frozen here. Nope. Nope. Not frozen here. So sometimes it's not our device. It might be yours. So before you um, get on that, you might want to just check your devices first and check your what's going on inside your house. If maybe your kids are downloading or you got other stuff running, that could might be an issue. It's but, raining. Uh, it is raining. That's like awesome news yeah my video today we we praise the lord for uh for the rain we only got we got less than an inch overnight but i'll tell you what that less than an inch still was about an almost an inch of rain that did us so good y'all we needed it so bad and today i did things in hopes that, it, that my weather app was right because it's never right but I did things around here. I was like, I'm going to take a gamble. And I like, I'm sitting here right now. And like, I'm like ecstatic that it's raining because, because. You're not going to talk about what you did? Oh, oh I yeah. saw you work your tail off. So I hope you, you if, if you didn't video, I didn't I video you, it, you should at least talk about it. Oh, I. That was so much work. It was a lot of work, but I did not video it. Wow. Oh. Sorry. I, I don't uh, let a moment go by. If I, if I see something I can video, I video. I actually took the day off from videoing. I didn't Good video a dang thing today. Um. I uh, roughed up every bare spot in this yard. With and, the rake, yeah. manually. <laughs> and then planted grass seed, covered it with straw, like a good Midwesterner does. And then I watered the straw enough to be able to make it bed down. You know, birds and things and wind. I just, I, I didn't want to take a chance of spreading this grass seed without it happening. Yeah. Um, and then I fertilized the whole yard as I walked around and did it. And then I did turf builder on on the hill over here, and I got um, another 125 pounds of grass seed out in the pasture today too. She's amazing, and uh, what's worse is I didn't help her at all. <laughs> you're you're injured. Step I, one. I am injured, but I was also I'm very behind on my videos, and then when I get behind on videos. You guys don't know this about me, but I go into kind of a panic mode. I've never been one to procrastinate. And sometimes life happens with your kids and with your, you know, your health and other things. And you find yourself getting behind a day or two. And I've, I'm on this road where I've not missed a video in so many years. I've not skipped a day in so many years. And I don't want to break that. I don't want to. I And it's not for me. I don't want to let anybody down. I do not want anyone to wake up. Let's go see what Lester's up to, honey. Here's our coffee. When they sit down and there's no video from Lester. And that that would just crush me. So I don't want to ever be that. So well, I sometimes. I always tell him, like, sometimes a break for you means that your product will be better because you're able to give yourself some mental break. But he has a fear of letting people down. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. That's no. actually a quality. Have you ever remember that um, when you used to go to a job interview? And uh, the, your employer or potential employer, your interviewer would ask you, tell me one thing that you would like to change about yourself, one negative or whatever. So there's a secret to that. You never want to say, oh, well, I'm lazy. I have a hard time getting up in the mornings and I drink a lot. You always make your negative really be a positive. So my negative is 
I can't skip a day. I don't want to let anybody down. I have to keep working. I, I just can't let anybody down. So even though that really is a negative on my end to an employer or to you all who are my employers, you're like, okay, we'll hire this guy. We, we like this guy. We can, we can count on him. He'll, he's going to come to work, rain or shine, <laughs> sick, or, sick or not. He's going to be here. And so Lester has been here every day for so long. Jamie, how many days has it been? A lot. At least five, five years. Five years of every day. At least day. five years. And Golly, gee. But I keep telling him, like, take, take a break. Tell people, like, hey. Can't. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. If I if I miss a day, then I'm dead, y'all. I'm dead or incapacitated. Or she's knocked me out, poisoned me. One of those things. <laughs> or the internet's down. Or now, that. I, I can't control Facebook. They've lost internet once already. We also lost AT&T once already. I cannot control those folks. But I will make sure that I have a video there. If I can, if I can help it, it'll be there. <laughs> yeah. I will not take a vacation. Not now. I do feel like, and I say this all the time, I do feel like our window here is, is very short. And I'm going to soak it up, man. I'm going to soak it up while I can. Because there will come a day. I don't know. Five years, ten years, next year. Who knows when. And we will be a thing of the past. You do know that. You do know we will be Here's a thing a of the thing, past. Though, like the Backstreet Boys, who would have ever known in their in their heyday that the Backstreet Boys in this day and age are like the who? And they may get invited to a random show or a random performance, and they might have some people our age going, yeah! But anyone of the generation has no idea who the heck these guys are. So don't tell me that 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 big uh not big but uh but popular or or favorite type things cannot eventually fade away sure they can, they can fade away y'all <laughs> probably by making too many shows <laughs> too many performances nah, i think i what? think i think that it fulfills you as much to make a video uh, and more so than not. So for everybody who's saying, just take a break, it'll be okay. Like in reality, I, I know that that's what keeps him going as well and that he enjoys what he does. And even though the pressure will drive him crazy that he does enjoy it. And as far as help today, I, I didn't actually want your help. That was really good exercise for me. And yeah, I did offer. Yeah, I, I did like, offer. No, I got it. So it was good. Uh, someone says I'm stuck there. I'm stuck with you, and I love that. Who said that? You're stuck with me. Julie Lynn Robinson says, "Lester, you're stuck with me." Thank you, Julie Lynn, and I'm happy to be stuck with you. And you're stuck with me too. So don't leave me. I will not leave you. I have never try to say this. Is that getting too personal again? Is that more TMI? Is that too much TMI? I've always told Jamie that I've never left a relationship. Never. I've never been the one to walk out on a relationship that be it a serious one or be it just a three month one. I've never been the one to walk out. I've always learned to work and how embarrassing for me to admit here at my age that I've been walked out on many times. <laughs> so so I tell Jamie not to worry. I'm never going to leave you, but at some point you will leave me. I already know what's going to happen. I already, I already know it's just going to happen. That's just my life. You, I'll never leave you, but and you every time leave he me. says it, I'm like, <laughs> Shut up. Like, where am I going? I'm not, I don't have anywhere to go. I don't want to go anywhere else. But I'll never leave you, Jamie. I'll, I'll never leave you guys. Leave I'll be here. Either. But you will leave me. <laughs> and I've learned to deal with it. I'm just going to learn to deal with it, y'all. Oh, boy. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. I took Lex back to his mama after a long spring break. He divided his week uh, between my mom and dad and us over here. And it was wonderful. I love sharing him with mom and dad. I talked about it a little bit today. I went live with L.E. over at the sanctuary. And I talked a little bit about Lex and the fact that I'm enjoying seeing him spend time with mom and dad. My mom and dad are not getting any younger, friends. They're not. And so as much as we love my mom and my dad, I know I can just see it that uh, the days are numbered as they are for all of us. I was going to say, that's a that's really for everyone. It's for everyone. And, you know, we could be gone in an accident, a lightning strike right now. I mean, you never know. But um, I want Lex to really absorb 
as much of Gigi and Papa as he can, because I lost a set of grandparents at a pretty young age. And, I, you know, so I'm really blessed that my parents also encouraged me to spend time with them as much as I could. Now, I did not spend much time with P-Pat uh, and Pops. And so, but I spent a ton of time with my nanny and my papa on my dad's side. <laughs> and so, um, I want Lex to really enjoy them. So, no, but he spent, I would say, four days here, four nights here, four nights, five days. We went on uh, several little trips and, and fun outings and adventures. Uh, the rodeo was a, probably our most important one, uh, our biggest event. We went to see the Houston Dynamo play two weeks ago. So we've had some really good moments with Lex. Uh, he's really enjoying life right now. But uh, today was back to mom, and it was just so sad to see him go. But everyone had a wonderful time with Lex. Mom and dad take such good care of him. He's absolutely one of their favorites. And oh, I wanted to read it. You know, let me There's read it. A, a, a Nigerian prince. Oh, another Nigerian prince trying to hook up with some of you wonderful ladies. Um, so Lex is back with his mama now. Uh, but that you know what that means? This Thursday is hotel night. Oh, I forgot about that. <clears throat> yep. This Thursday will be our first hotel night in a while. But um, Lex is excited about it. I got to get everything geared. I'll have to get, I'll have to get all my jobs done early. Shoot, and, I'm going to have to gear up because I haven't had like a real Thursday in a couple weeks. And this Thursday is your trip to get the horse, right? So oh, you're going to have God. A, and that means Jamie's going to be pulling a truck and trailer on a Thursday. On a Thursday with two horses in the back. Holy moly. Are you able to do this? I'm having chest pain now. <laughs> And you have all you know, what's, you know what else is happening in that though is that Bree's kids are coming with us. Bree's kids are gonna go. Oh no, Lord. no pressure, no pressure at all. Well, y'all might want to take someone along with you for child Sweet care, baby Jesus. How, who's gonna manage Bree's kids while y'all are driving? Each they're other, gonna, yeah, they'll be in the back seat. They have car seats, they're, okay. they're restrained. It might yeah. be loud, but. I don't know how much Breeze talked about that. Yet. I don't know if she has. And I just feel like we would just let that out on accident. You never told me. I didn't know. What I've done to prep for all of that is I've taken the trailer back over to the sanctuary. So what we'll do on Wednesday is go over and get the, uh, the farm truck. We'll get it nice and cleaned up for you girls. We will uh, get it fueled up as well. Make sure everything's working fine. And I'll get all the trailer hooked up. And so whatever time you get there to pick up Bree and them, them hoodlums with her, those little munchkins, uh, you guys will have a nice, safe trip to pick up her horses. But uh, I am oh, so all sorry. All Bree said was soon. Dang it. So we're going to have to ask y'all, all 10,000 of you all. Don't tell Bree. Can we trust you all? Can There's, we just say that it was Say soon? it was Lester. It was soon. And Lester said soon. Lester just said soon. Y'all, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I hate when people give away my secrets. And then uh, to know that I just gave away Brienne's because she wanted to surprise everybody. I know that was an accident. I feel really bad now. Well, you should have told me not to say anything. I didn't know that you were going to talk about it. Hey, listen, don't you be the one because what I'm going to do is this. If Bree comes to me and says, thank y'all for telling everybody, I'm going to say, could you tell me the names of who told you? Just so I will know who I can and cannot trust with the secret. Don't betray me. Um, anywho, so Thursday's a big day. I will not be here. Jamie will be. A lot of driving, a lot of driving a trailer. I'm so proud of her for being able to drive a trailer. And uh, I can't and, back it up. We can't get anywhere well. <laughs> that needs to be backed up for the record. That will be pull through events only. Uh, I will say one thing. I think your Thursday alone will be the Bree, Breeze kids in the back of that truck will be enough to be a Thursday video in itself. You should put up a tripod I actually and was mount ask a camera her, on those two kids. That's exactly what I was going to say. I was going to ask her like, hey, can I just video what it's because it's been a very long time since I hung out with two kids, three and under for that amount of time in a oh, vehicle. Oh, Lord. And I just feel like, I feel like Brace yourself, it's going to be says. something. Uh, so just a quick, for those who don't know Brienne's kids, uh, yesterday we're over at mom and dad's. I took a board game over. We're all playing. 
and um, Bree was down working on her on her horse stall. Laramie was inside watching the kids. Well, Carter wanted to go down and visit her mama. Not really. She wanted to sneak over to G's house. <laughs> so Carter goes, that's fine. Go to your mama's. He sends Bree a message, says Carter's coming down. She says, fine. Carter comes out of the house, walks far enough away where Laramie can't see her. And then she high tells it over to Gigi's house. Now she runs in the house and she asks if she's hungry. So she thought it was Sunday dinner. It was only Saturday. Aww. So G's like, Sunday dinner's not till tomorrow, sweetie. And she starts crying. And mom goes, don't worry, I'll fix you something. Well, she didn't like this. She didn't want that. She didn't want that. She wanted spaghetti. And so that was a Sunday dinner kind of a thing, not a cook it real fast. But that time, Bree finds out that Carter's not there. Bree comes over to get her. Carter runs and hides. <laughs> when Bree finds her, she screams bloody murder. Bree's trying to carry her around to say her goodbyes to everybody. Uh, Carter's screaming, can Brinley go? Brinley goes, I don't want to go. Then Carter has another fit and just falls. She flails. <laughs> you know that word flails? It's like the little, you know those little crashed car dummies? Yeah. But the whole time she's flailing, she's screaming at the top of her lungs. And she's sitting there doing all of that. And I'm like, Carter, just come give me a kiss by. Just come love me. Just come love your Uncle Lester. No! She screamed right in my face, no. And so I'm like, okay, out. And so Brie carried her out of the house. And she cried and she cried and she screamed Carter and she is, cried. Carter is a 3 nager right now. <laughs> and I don't know if Brie has used that word yet, but she's a 3 nager And she has sass and attitude and just enough knowledge like like sneaking around to go to g's and like just a, just enough man and i'm i feel for brie i really do because that's that's a hard time and then to have you know sweet little cash right behind there learning from his big oh, sister oh i can't gosh. even imagine no like i literally can't but um i'm i'm here for it on thursday i can do it a few hours <laughs> i may I come home and have my own time I, out thursday after yeah, but <laughs> i can't wait for your friday video to see what happened on thursday so that'll be a lot of fun, man. That'll be a whole lot of fun. It's going to be something. Over at the uh, sanctuary today, Lex and Le have pretty much finished their gate project. And when I say I make it into kind of a big deal because it is a big deal because you and I have never installed a double gate, a double gate that comes together mm -hmm. that has to match up perfect. No, that's hard. That that could that's impossible, really. If you think about it, it's it's very hard you know, to do. You know what actually makes it the worst though is not the two posts. It's that the ground probably isn't level. No. So the so the mental things around it are probably just as hard. Oh my god, it's crazy. And so Ellie has struggled and he has struggled. Yet I said this today, he's never asked for my help. He will not ask for my help. And I don't want him to think that it shows weakness because we ask for help. As a teacher, as, as what I do now uh, with social media, I've asked for help, y'all. I ask for help all the time. And it doesn't make me lesser. It makes me want to do better. And so L.E. refuses to ask for help. And so I've pulled up over there so many days, and he'll be out there working and working and working. And then what he's built one day, he'll take down the next and redo it. So he wants to do it nice. He wants to do it great. And then yesterday to pull up and see he and Lex both out there working on it. Lex is holding it level. Ellie's trying to screw things in. And I just felt so in love with my boys or just helping each other out a little bit. I come to find out Lex only did it for $20. Lex had to be paid to help. But, hey, he's learning the value of a dollar and that money makes takes hard work. I paid Lex to do something the other night, too. I talked about that in my you live did? today. I did. Uh, it was, you want to tell about it? No, go ahead. Well, you can, uh, if you want to, it was too hard for us, our big old bodies to get in and out of the seats we were at, at the rodeo. So Lex is a little tiny little guy. He can just, you know, squeeze right through everybody because when we get up, people all got to back up. Some people got to stand up and it just makes the entire. Listen, I don't like to rub my booty in a bunch of strangers faces at, at in public places. <laughs> and that's what it was like walking in front of someone and because we were in folding chairs yeah, and like, you had to like hold on to each one because people's feet and it wasn't even like normal stadium seat situations. Like it was, it was a tight space and a very awkward angle. So I was like, Hey Lex, 
would you go to the concession stand and get your dad a Dr. Pepper? Yeah. And, and so Lux is like, hmm. And Jamie's like, I'll give you $20. Shoot. Okay, what do you want? And <laughs> off he went. Phone and all. And off he go. I'm like, if you get lost, call me. But no, he went and made it right back in no time flat. So yeah, we were really proud guy. of him. He's very mature. Lex has always been very mature in that setting and, and being able to handle things. And takes a lot of pride in being able to do things on his own. Like last summer, there were like four days in a row where we didn't cook. Because uh, we let me rephrase that we did cook, he didn't want to eat what we cooked, so he cooked his own food without even like know anything about it. Like, he was like, eh, I don't really feel like having what y'all are having, I'll make myself X. And we we're both like, You oh, can do that, okay? No, he can, he can make macaroni and cheese, he can warm up anything in a microwave, he can make ramen, he makes his own breakfast as far as his like uh waffles go, he loves waffles and he can do it all. And, and I love the fact that he's going to be very independent and he's a, he's a perfect, he's a great thinker. Listen to this though. Uh, so this is funny and it's not funny. So I'm going to tell y'all right now, this is funny and not funny. And if you don't want to watch, this is the time to leave, but I I'm real curious about this. So I was meeting Lex's mom today and we're in Houston and we saw a shuttle van pull up. And it dropped off a lot of what we suspect are undocumented. I don't want to say illegal because that's just a word that people are all like. Ah! But we saw a, 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 a van load of, of men get out of that van and off they go in different directions. And we're right there with them. And I'm like, Lex, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to think really long and hard about how you feel about this. And so he already knows, guys, it doesn't matter how old your kids are. If they're in school and they talk to other kids, I can promise you there's a lot of parents at home that are having some very oral discussions in their families about, I'm just going to call it politics, which sucks because kids are too young to worry about that kind of stuff. But Lex knew all about it. He knew what it was. He knew what was happening. And I'm like, son, without getting technical, let me just ask you, how does it make you feel? And he's like, well, I don't want to say that they don't belong here because I think that, and he was just so mature. He goes, but it does make me feel kind of dangerous if, and so he would, he just laid everything out in the most beautiful of terms. And I'm like, that is a really well-spoken. Now it might be a little bit political, correct. He was trying not to tiptoe and say the wrong yeah. thing. But how powerful for even a little guy that age to recognize things going on around them and have an opinion on things. Because most 12-year-olds, guys, they're oblivious. They are oblivious to anything going on in the world around them. They have no idea. And, and my son did. And it was a neat moment to have a really different kind of conversation yeah. where I enjoyed seeing him give me his thoughts, his opinions and stuff instead of the typical parent telling my kid how to believe and telling my kid what to say and telling my kid what, what, you know, I don't want to put all of my biases onto him. Let him create his own way of seeing things. And uh, it was a powerful and a sad, it was a sad moment to see people getting out of that van with whatever they could carry with them. Some were in plastic bags, some were in trash bags, some were in suitcases that had little rollers. So they obviously had a little bit easier time. But there were a lot of folks and they and, and when they got off, they were they got in clusters. Some clusters went this way. Some went this way. And then I thought to myself, Lex, what will they do now? Where will if you were dropped off somewhere, where would you go? And yeah. that was the one that baffled the both of us because I wouldn't know where to go. Would I you? Know. I wouldn't know where to go. And they just dropped off and says, good luck. Good. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. And that was all. But uh, I've done that with L.E. a lot, too. I've always asked L.E. hard questions to try to think himself through, knowing that there may become a time in his life at a job interview or even on social media where he has to really think about what he's saying, because we all know I don't do that very well. And so uh, that's not true. I know I don't. I don't. I sometimes will come back later and think about what I said and apologize. But uh, I don't always think before I speak. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people don't speak, uh, think before they speak. But um, 
No, I have always asked Ellie hard questions to try to think of a really well explained answer that's not overly biased but shows sens sensitivity and stuff. So, anywho, migrants that's the right word. Migrants, we'll just say migrants. Thank you very much. So, um, Jennifer says my filter is very thin. I have days, I have days <laughs> where my does. filter is buried somewhere like it's outside and i'm not and well i got i got a cursing from you we were playing a board game a because board game and i got it a wasn't cursing. it wasn't a real cursing come on now it wasn't <laughs> a real cursing i don't get that competitive but sometimes he plays dirty and i'm like oh. like first it <laughs> feels like like we're we're teaming up together to take on something. And then all of a sudden he'll like come in the back door and be like taking it all out. Yeah. So I had a few choice words during that game. We play board games quite a bit. We play card games quite a bit, especially when we go over to the J and L. We don't have the right internet there to do Wi-Fi stuff. We only have our phones. So we take board games with us and we play. Speaking of which, is that in the car now? No, no, I forgot. Oh, I forgot. I left, left it at Gigi's house. So we can't play tonight is what you're saying? Darn. Uh, Clue is our game that we love to play the most. You all remember the game of Clue where somebody murdered somebody. You don't know which room or what weapon. So your mission in Clue is to try to figure out who committed the murder, which room they did it in, and what weapon they used. But Jamie is so smart as a, as a human that she's learned how to trick me into guessing the wrong answers. And so I, you don't know how many times I thought that I had it all figured out. I go ahead and put it all on the line, say, I know it, I got it, I got it, I got it. And I'll lay out who I think did it, what room they did it in, and what weapon they used, only to find out that I am completely wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, how did you... What? How? And then at some point she'll explain, she'll explain what she did and how she managed to do that. And oh my gosh, I, I can't love beat Clue her. and I love Risk. Risk. I can't beat her at either I, one of those. I games. love any game to be honest with you. But last summer when Jalen was here, if you remember, we bought a um, a game that was like a it was a a, a mystery like a um, yeah like, I like a murder mystery. Oh, it was so hard. And it was awesome because it basically was like a, a police file has how it came. And you, it, there were secret envelopes that you couldn't open until you got to certain spots. I fell in love with that. Like, but I couldn't put it down. It was so late and everyone was so tired and over it. And I was like, no quitting whatsoever. And now like they, I, once you solve that, it's done. So you have to go buy another one. And I haven't been back, but I got it at Barnes and Noble. So next time, I, I don't think you buy that for me. I, I did not enjoy that. It was way too hard. Oh, I loved it. Way too much reading. Oh, I loved you it. You had a lot. to have like a complete a complete police file, and it was just like twists and turns. What you needed to play that game was sincerely a big old board mm -hmm. where, you, where you could connect yarn to all the different things that connected each other. Yeah, that you couldn't, and I can't do that in my head. There's no way. If you don't mind me jumping off the subject, yeah. Diane says, "Can I ask what is happening with the alligator at the JL property?" Okay, so we are trying in Jamie and Lester fashion. We're going to try, and I say this again, we're going to try to capture and rehome that alligator. Um, how we're going to do that, you'll have to wait for the video. Will it work? We don't know, but we're going to try. We're going to try our best. Uh, I can lasso really well, and I've seen a number of videos of different guys and how they can catch them. I'm going to fish. Jamie's going to fish it out. Well, we're going to try, y'all. Give us, a, give us a chance to try first. And unless it starts causing problems and putting our babies at risk, we're going to try to do it the Lester and Jamie way first. Now, if at some point we can't, we are well within our rights, y'all, to take care of a threat to our animals, to our children, to our livelihood. And uh, But we're going to try first. Someone says, lasso. Yes, that means what I do with my rope. I can lasso. Like, you have no idea what I can lasso. <laughs> she has no idea I can lasso. 
Jamie, tell them who could who. Oh my gosh. It Tell turns out then. that Lester can lasso. He has lassoed me. He has lassoed Gracie. <laughs> Who else did you lasso? Was it jo no? It wasn't Jolene. I've lassoed a number, Jamie. I've lassoed a number. You name it. I can't think of who I haven't lassoed. Um, but uh, I know I. It's, it's trust me. There's videos. <laughs> Plenty of videos. Of Lester and his lasso. Yeah. How did you learn how to lasso anyway? Uh, Uncle Dan taught me. Oh. Uncle Dan taught me. I would love to see a... Oh, my God. The next Morrow Man contest. Oh, my God. Can we create a Morrow Man contest? You know how they have like... So, here's the only downfall to that. If you, You've you got to be very careful what you lasso. Because don't forget what Facebook did to a very sweet family. Yeah, you family. don't want to lasso. I, I, it can be a barrel. I don't care. Let's tell that story of that sweet family who got in trouble with Facebook and lost their page. Uh, there's a family who had a lasso. They also have five, I believe it was five step kids, right? They, I, no, they were... Um, uh, kids they were kids I they were kids yeah fine they were kids and they were playing and i think it was a dad who was out in the yard lassoing his kids the kids were running he was lassoing the kids rough play yes but we're all about rough play he wasn't choking them he wasn't like hog tying them he was lassoing not pulling it not no just a rope and a lasso a rope and a lasso, either roping around the neck or roping around the chest, roping around the feet. It was fun. It was funny. Facebook didn't see it that way. They thought that was abusive. That was a, that was a horrible, horrible thing for a parent to do. And so that poor family lost their channel because of that. Yeah. And so I tell you what, I will... If I ever lasso you or Lex or Ellie or it won't be on video. It will not be on a video. No, but I was saying we could have a Morrow Man, like a, a Morrow Man competition. So you know how they have like strong man competitions? You know yeah. about that? So we can create like like American Ninja Warrior, except that's Morrow Hill style. Cowboy Roundup. Yeah. And we lasso. And then you have to like stack hay bales. Oh, and then I can you do have that. to do like like so like oh my god, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be so good. This is gonna be like the spring event. It's I like the it. Morrow Rodeo. We should do it pretty soon. Right yes. now is rodeo season. Morrow That's rodeo. What I'm saying. Let's do it. So we should have like, oh my god, cowboy competition. Yes, the Morrow Cowboy Competition. Listen, we all this have is gonna e be so good. We all have e-bikes. We can actually be on our e-bike and trying to lasso at the same time, not each other. We will lasso stationary objects. Right. We'll be the ones moving and trying to lasso at the same time. Oh, my God. This is going to be so good. <laughs> this is going to be so good. Do it, Jamie. Do it, Jamie. I'm, gonna, I'm going to coordinate the Morrow Cowboy oh, Competition. Oh, Lord. Um, and then so for barrel racing, we use our e-bikes to do. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. We'll be using our e-bikes. We can't knock the barrels over. It'll be a timed event. Yeah. So that's two events right there, lassoing and barrel racing. I really do mean haystacking. Like, haystacking will be, how will you hay, how, how high do you got to go? Well, but it's square bales, not round. Yeah, I know. How high do you got to go? I don't, whoever can go the highest. Oh my God. That's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be good. I have one bad shoulder, Jamie. Are well, you, you aren't going to win that competition well, then. I'm going to be out on that one. Um, and then if we could take it a step further and go to like the old West style rodeo with BB guns, putting apples on top of people's. No, <laughs> we're not going to do that. No, sir. Okay. I know. I'm no, kidding. Sir. Pie oh. eating contest. Oh Lord. Who? <laughs> no, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. <laughs> we'll give Jamie time to plan that. Yeah, one let out. me, let me think this through here because I originally was going to say Mar the Morrow Man competition, but now I know that like I some... apple bobbing will be fun. That's not cowboy. Not that's not cowboy enough. Let me let me think this through. Okay, let me let me think this through and see how we can do this. Um... A biscuit eating contest, then, because <laughs> that's Dan can cook all the biscuits and we all got to eat them. Oh, but campfire cooking. Campfire cooking on your cast iron, cast iron campfire cooking, and we we they have the chili cook off. They do have a chili cook off every year to kick off the rodeo. So we will kick off ours with a camp. We'll all have our campfires around each other, not at night. It'll be daytime. So we can video. All have our campfires. We all have to cook something, 
And then whoever's not in the contest will be the judges. They will walk by and they will do a... How about we do a fire building contest? A fire building contest. Instead of cooking. Because cooking is a long... That's like a whole day event. You could do you could do that too. But I think a fire building contest would be pretty good. Everybody starts with the same materials. Yes. Like... Yes. Now I don't know if it should just be the men. I don't know. I got to think this through. Well, like... Or you can be like team... Like couples. So at any rodeo, they have some events for women, some events for men... So if you guys want to do one, y'all have to do the barrel racing using the e-bikes. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Let me, I'm going to talk to the girls and see how they feel about this. Do they do they want a, a women's side? Do they, you know, like, I got to I gotta think this through. But I do think. A couple's two-step. We will win that sucker. We would actually win. We that. can win the two-step. A, a two the only other dance. person that I know that's, that would be close to that is probably Dan and Lou. Dan, yeah, Dan, 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 and Lou will win, y'all. Yeah. I've um, never seen Laramie two step. Laramie freaking, freaking dance. Dan, Laramie and be up two step. Jake can't two step. Uh, and then get this: a harmonica playing contest. Harmonicas are all about the old west. The harmonica. The only we, hard part about doing couples is that Kim doesn't have a partner. Kim got Levi. That's all she needs. She ain't gonna win anyway. That's sad. Kim can't two-step. Kim she, can two-step. She might can, but... I've seen Kim two-step in her living room. Tina and Rob can two-step. It, it will be a very stiff competition. Now, here's the thing. Can it all happen in one day, or will it have to take... It's going to have to be one day. So, we'll have to plan like a Saturday or a Sunday and just have a moral rodeo. We have to do it before it gets too hot. Yeah. This is going to be great, y'all. This is going to be so great. I'm, I'm also thinking like... We have three tractors of the exact same size, right? You, Jake, and Papa. Papa does have AC. But what could we do with the tractors that is like all I can similar think of, to the you know the wagon train? No, it would be taking three rolls of hay and stacking a pyramid. A three, but you nobody if, got any hay left. There, yeah, we're out of hay. We have no hay until we, <laughs> we only get have more. square bales. <laughs> I don't know what you do with the tractor. Don't say, me, don't say tractor pool. We're no, two guys gonna change. No, we're, do that. No, we're, no, we're not no. doing tractor pool. We're pools. not doing that. Let me think about. But hold this. on a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Remember they had those wagon train races at the rodeo. Yeah, we ain't racing. We could race our tractors we ain't into tractor a, racing. Nobody, we're not tractor nothing dangerous. Nothing that can break. <laughs> All right, we don't want to hurt anybody. Let me think about this, and I would say this is going to happen in April. Not March is almost over and we have Easter coming up. So that's too soon for me to get everything coordinated and thought out. But April, the weather is still beautiful. And um, that gives us time to plan all this. So I'm excited about that. This is something I can actually win, Jamie. I feel I feel good about this one, but uh, I can last. So I think the whole thing got started on Lester and his lassoing skills. Well, that went on a pretty long tangent. We're actually over an hour already. What in the world? Time went by really about? fast. I don't know. What have we not talked about that we need, need to? The goats. We talked about the goats, right? Yeah. We talked about the goats, uh, that we have three new baby goats. There's big horse projects happening. I have a follow-up procedure this week. So little, what day is that? Wednesday. A little prayer for me on that. Uh, a little prayer for me on Thursday. Right after that, that probably was poor planning uh, on my part. But, yeah. Someone says, mustard, how can you lasso with a bad shoulder? I don't know. I, I haven't tried it, but I don't think the motions of that, as long as my shoulder. on the wrist. Yeah. <laughs> as long as I keep my shoulders down here and below, I'm fine. I did big projects yesterday and took a tour, took a trip that I videoed. Um, of course I have, I have some up close and personal baby goat stuff and some other things that Lester doesn't know about because I caught him doing something and, uh, I share it on a video tomorrow. And then, uh, I do need your help with finishing one of the projects. So this week, so there'll be a, uh, together project that will come out at some point too. And, just a lot happening around all the properties and animals. And hopefully we catch the dang snake 
And you're going to work on ants, right? Yes, I am still working on getting rid of our ant problems. I have a lot of other ideas. I highlighted and pinned a comment from Vanessa Marie. I'm going to tell you why, and I hope this is not offensive to anybody, either Vanessa or you. But on Friday, while I was doing my live, my Lunch with Longhorn Lester live, I, I had no idea because I was focused on everything here. And Carl out in the pasture was doing his mating call. You know the mating call. You've heard it. And I, it, it went, I had no idea. However, sweet Vanessa here says, I hear Carl doing a mating call. And I said, I, <laughs> I played dumb. Like I didn't hear it. And other people are saying, yeah, I hear it too. And I'm like, what, <laughs> what are y'all talking? <laughs> so, so what I was implying that only those that can hear it are being called to his mating <laughs> routine. <laughs> so today, uh, I felt horrible about that. I don't know why, but I went back later. I'm like, man, that probably was not very right. That was probably wrong of me. Was that wrong of me? Or was that funny? I'm just asking. Was it was that funny? Lester of you. That was Lester of me. I just don't know if Vanessa is going to forgive me or not. She's still here. So, Vanessa, I hope you know I was just playing with you. So what is it over here? <laughs> Kelly Harris says, say my name. Kelly Harris. Kelly Harris. I said your name. Okay, so Amy said it was funny. Okay, Amy, thank you. I thought it was kind of clever that Vanessa could hear that sound over the voice of me. And which means that Carl has a really powerful mating call. Even though I couldn't hear a darn thing. Why are you smiling like that, Jamie? <laughs> so less dreaded. Well, Vanessa, please reply and say, okay, okay, where did it go, Jamie? It's up. Up? Yeah. Find it for me. Find it for me. I get I get I get hyper fixated on finding comments. Vanessa, thank you. I get your humor. Okay, Vanessa, good. Because <laughs> I didn't know if I hurt your feelings or not, because I was just playing, y'all. I just play. I play, I play, I play. All right. I'll let I'll leave Vanessa alone now. Vanessa, thank you for being a good sport. Okay. What else she got before we wrap this thing up? That's we've, it. We've y'all. had our hour and 12 minutes. It's a busy time of year, but it, we're really blessed to be able to do this busy time of year and we're just so grateful that you're here for it and support us and love us and put up with us hold on someone just says please could we add the pig calling contest to the rodeo oh and my god that's yes that's a real thing i don't know if that sounded like i have never heard you shoot that no that's the first time i've ever made that sound <laughs> you've never heard that she's never heard that Babe, 11,000 people just heard me make the most god-awful noise. I hope your dogs are not barking and going crazy. But you do. Where did that come from? <laughs> That's pig calling. That's pig calling. You have your phone? If you go to Google and type I ain't in, doing that right now. I want to show them what. I, I'm not just making this up, y'all. That's a real thing. I don't know how I know that. Maybe we should have a goat calling contest instead. Pig calling contest. I have never heard you do that before. I spilled it all right on my glass. Okay, these are pig collars. <laughs> Don't be an ad. Just... Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Hold on! Like Hold on! And I want to have hear everybody. One video that I am gonna do that <laughs> nobody's gonna steal my idea. I'm gonna go around every morrow and have them do their cattle call. On my video. Cattle calls are too easy. That'll, no, that'll, they're not easy. They're that'll, hard. That'll be an easy win for either me or my dad. We're going to win say, that No, one. that's not going to be the contest. I'm going to go make a video of all the Marl Hill cattle Oh, you calls. want to video it? Yes. Okay. We can do the pig calling in, in the rodeo. Here goes the worst one. Here's the worst oh, one. Oh, God. So pigs have different sounds they make in different moods. So the one that I called is similar to like, come on, littles. Sue Pigs love that. They love the sound. They all come running. They're so excited. But you can also have pigs come to you in a in a different way. If you go, <laughs> that hurts. <coughs> I'll never do that again. Where's my drink? Sue 
my mom is going to win that one. My mom is great at the pig calls, y'all. My, listen to me. My mom is a wonderful at pig calling. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Let's hear you do it. Sue-wee. Do it. No, I'm not doing it. Absolutely not. I encourage you all <clears throat> to learn the way Christmas is here. Me, Christmas came. She's like, is dad okay? I heard him cough. Sweetie, I was pig calling, not calling my Chrissy. Oh, and Stella. They're both here. They're both here in my lap. Come on up, girls. Come on, Stella. Come on up, sweetie. She her legs don't work. Can you help her with her legs? No, oh, baby. Turn the camera down a little bit so everyone can see her little her little face. Loving daddy. Okay, Christmas, stop scratching me. All right. Now get down. All right. Move. Enough. 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 All right. That's enough. 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 Okay. So Sorry if I woke up the babies. If y'all had families asleep, uh, if your husband's trying to take a nap, and all of a sudden now Lester ruined that for y'all. But I have no words right now, but you can bet your behind that there will be a pig calling contest. So no. we have no cows. That's not good. That was cow. That's cow. Yeah, but the pig calling contest is on the. My neighbors are going to hate me. If it's not bad enough, say They nothing. already do hate you. They already hate us. Y'all, our neighbors hate us. They don't tell us they hate us. They smile. Like... Seriously, when we drive by, when we leave out the... So here's what happened a couple of days ago. I will not name the neighbor, but I was coming down my driveway. I could see my neighbor coming down their driveway. I used the word there because not to identify man or woman. I was coming down my driveway, and this individual was coming down their driveway. This individual saw me and stopped. I kept going. I get to the gate, and I look over, and I'm watching. And this, and this individual is slowly backing up, and I'm like, God, I don't, like, I don't see you. And I know why they did that, because they hate me, because of, uh, of, they hate me because of so many things. Oh yes, suk 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 suk. Everyone is going to have so much fun with this pig calling. This is going to be so good. I can't wait. Yes. I really am going to go visit all the morrows and have a cattle call done. So I, that's going to happen this week as you well. You might as well do a cattle call and a pig call, and then don't you vote? Let everyone else vote. Okay. Make it fun. Like make it all where right. everyone can vote. But guys, you really can't vote for who has the cutest eyes and who's you know she's pregnant. Oh, no. I'm going to do it blind, and and then. Match the face to the voice. Oh, that will be the best. Yeah. That will be so fun to match. So you vote on who you think was the best at the different calls, and then Jamie will identify who the winner was. Yeah, because if they sit there and they watch someone do it, oh, they. Yeah, no. we all love Pawpaw. We'll vote for Pawpaw. He needs a few votes. Oh, we all love you, Gigi. No, 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do that. Oh, and a donkey call. Don't do it. I'm not save gonna do it. it. Save it. Yeah, because I already feel like our neighbors behind us over here. Probably. I actually hear the dogs barking in the neighborhood now, and I'm like, Don't do it. I did that. Yeah, I did that. So <laughs> we're gonna have some fun. I five on that one. That's a great idea. Who came up with that idea? That was me. I created that idea. The pig calling. Oh, the pig calling. Yeah, you can go with that, but not the rodeo. I get credit for the rodeo. You get, yeah, you can do the rodeo. <laughs> We're going to do it. Guys, we got to get off of here. Don't forget that we get in trouble when we go over an hour, and an hour 19 is probably going to get us like pushing mm -hmm. limits. Y'all should know better than that. We're going to get off. Chasing chickens would be great. No. People freaked out last time, though, we did that. When we had a chicken chasing thing, we had so much hate. We had a chicken match game and people hated our guts. We just matched up beautiful chicks and people hated us for that. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta be real careful with chicken people. They're almost they're almost as bad as horse people. Actually, chicken people might have been meaner than horse people. Horse people are pretty, they're like, you know, but chicken people, they're like rare. They're boy, y'all are like right there with your love of your animals. <sighs> y'all. I think that chicken people outnumber horse people. I do. At least on our page, they do. They do. They do. We have a lot more chicken lovers than we do horse lovers. Yeah. At least it appears from the comments. Or horse people just, they don't even. They, they gave up on us already. If it's a horse, oh, Lord, I ain't watching this. Man. <laughs> Maybe so. Hey, we love y'all so very much. We're blessed to have you. Uh, we would not be anything where 
where we're at now or where we've come from without all of the love and support from you all. And uh, I want to say thank you. I'm going to continually remind you how blessed we are to have you. And thank you so much for putting up with us, just putting up with us when we don't deserve it. You put up with us anyway. So that means so much to us, y'all. Thank you. Y'all, you? thanks so much for loving us and giving us the greatest gift of all, which is your time. We love you and we will catch you tomorrow morning. Next video. Night, guys. Good night, y'all. You want to play that thing?